Welcome, Achievers, to your Easy Chiffers Game Podcast for the week of May 30th already. I hope this finds everyone well. I am sitting with you today solo. Elijah, of course. It's good to have you back. Or if you're a new one, thank you for tuning in. We have quite a bit to talk about, not necessarily in this episode specifically, but we're going to be having multiple episodes, not going live today, but there will be one, of course, there will be a one talking over the state of play that will be going live in just an hour and a half for me right now as a recording uh, to you at home. I'm sure you've already watched it. Hopefully it's good. There was a leak that pretty much stated everything that was going to be in the state of play seemed believable as well. Uh, well, of course, we're not going to be talking about that right now, as it would be useless by the time you get it, and also pointless uh, to discuss on the show, because I don't feel like we really need to spoil State of Plays unless it's something really good, maybe. Especially a State of Play, like, they're already kind of mellow. I'm not really expecting too much here, but we'll see. Let's shut the show. Not so rapid fire. We already went over the state of play. Next up, Cyberpunk 2077 has currently no one working on the game. This was mentioned in CD Projekt Red's financials, and the development is finally over. I got this over on IGN, and it's clear that the game is... It kind of feels like the end of an era, right? Uh, it's not out of the realm that someone on that team might have worked on that game for almost 10 years, right? And for it to finally be over, it's kind of weird, right? That This was like the game that was going to change everything, and then it came out, complete broken mess. It took them three, three and a half years, something like that, to fix it. And then we have a pretty great game, in my opinion. Um, an actual amazing game, quite frankly, that I think everyone should check out. But, you know, you kind of already came out, right? It's hard to come out twice. Hopefully... This did not discourage them, and this taught them a very valuable lesson there. I, I remember them hitting their stock uh, profit. Or their actual stock price got hit very hard because of Cyberpunk. Very hard. So I'm sure they all learned a valuable lesson from this. Dragon Quest 3 HD Remake is coming soon. This was teased on the Dragon Quest Tour account. Very excited. Not much was the tease. It was literally just the logo. Very excited for this, though. I will always take more Dragon Quest, and uh, this is no exception. So we will wait. I'm assuming Summer Games Fest, maybe at the state of play that just, and you already know at home that we saw or not. I'm assuming Summer Games Fest, though. Next up, Redfall's final update is live, and this was the one that added the offline option, pausing, etc. A lot of things. You can check it out, of course, if you are playing the game. I imagine most, if not all of you uh, listening to this, are not playing Redfall, but if you are, there you go. Enjoy Redfall. Uh, pretty much the complete opposite story, almost, of Cyberpunk in the... Not really reverse, right? I don't know, but it's pretty much Cyberpunk if they never fixed it, right? Uh, because the studio closed, unfortunately. Very sad, of course. Arcane. Uh, Leon. Very sad. Now, this is going to be where we're going to VGC. Now, everyone at home, please go check this out specifically. Because I do want everyone to click on this. Because it is good reporting. And I don't like reading things verbatim. Because that, you know, eliminates the idea of you going to go click. So, I wanted to actually... Grab this specific article, Andy, Andy Robinson, VGC. And they bring up the fact that the the recently there, of course, at this uh the Sony like a uh, business meeting uh, of their specific segment. This was on uh, Wednesday of this week, um, or sorry, last week, I think. No, no, this week. And so yesterday, and they were mentioning that still after all this time. Half of their monthly active users are still on PlayStation 4. So that's 49 million users. It's about half. So they have 97 million monthly active users, and that's almost perfectly cut in half. Um, funny enough, though, PS5 players do play more game by double. So PS5 has a much more active user base, which makes sense because that is where your more hardcore people are. And there's a bunch of other things you should go actually check this out and read about it. Uh, it talks about growth, um, 
spending time on services and add-ons, etc. You should everyone listening to the show should go check this out. Give them a click. Of course, we love VGC, even though they have said some wild things. But we love them. Go give them a couple clicks. Read that article. It's very interesting. I think it's actually quite interesting that we still have that many people on the PS4, which makes sense. A lot of people are content with what they have, and I don't blame them. I mean, the PS4 could potentially be one of the best console generations ever made, especially when you really think about how many games came forward from uh, obscurity and inability to play, and now you can play them on the PS4. I, In my opinion, now the PS5 is just better because you can play everything anyway, So, but that's beside the point. But the PS4 is a great console. I don't blame any of them for keeping them. A lot of people don't need the high-end things. I would say um, maybe the vast majority almost don't really need the high-end things, and they really haven't adapted that kind of Apple mindset to their consumers where it feels like they have to buy a thing. Uh because many people have no problem buying a phone every year too, but might scoff at the fact of uh, doing the same thing with a console, uh, and that's only three to five years. So, very interesting. I would like to talk to someone to see if like is it a money thing or is it just potentially like there's so many games you just don't find the need for it now. I will say we have GTA Six on the horizon. Um, really, really cl- not you know really close, relatively speaking, and that might be what really kills off the previous generation now gta 6 could be launching on um previous gen has that been announced actually i'm speaking kind of out of my ass let's check on that actually to make sure because i know we have what is it releasing oh i don't think we do we know i don't think we do i know they did not mention pc i remember that very vividly because they um are they need to take their time with um the PC ports because uh famously Red Dead GTA Five all of these things had just horrible horrible PC ports so that is an example of why they might not be in. so it might maybe it it probably isn't on last gen because I don't see it anywhere so there you go. I don't think it will be. If that is the case, that will be the game. And they might do that. You know, you imagine there's so much going on. Maybe they don't want to dumb it down to that extent because you do have to sacrifice some things for your ability to be able to be on a PS4, to be on a Xbox One launch from 2013. I don't think they'll do that. I think it will for sure be only current gen. And this will, that will be the thing that make people buy a, a console, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. This, of course, is part of the show where we talk about what have you been playing? Now, this is something you've been playing recently. I will be answering myself. Now, of course, this is a question for you at home. What have you been playing? This could be um, any game that you've been playing recently. Let me know in the comments below, or you can tweet at me at EVM9000, and we'll have a little discussion. It'll be nice. I have been playing nothing. But Destiny 2, comma, Hellblade 1 specifically. So I've been kind of taking a break from gaming mostly. A little bit of Destiny here and there to help uh, clan mates and my uh, close friend kind of catch up. But aside from that, been kind of taking a break, enjoying my time elsewhere, spending time with my wife, doing little things around the house. Did a bunch of little, you know, small things around the house. Like, you know, we had a, bla- a bad glass sliding door. Uh, that had that had like you know a bunch of little things wrong with it, so I, I fixed the rollers on that. You know, it, it, it did a little little things around the house, clean the AC, the outside AC. You know, you do the little spray and then you kind of do a little rinse out kind of thing. I did that. It just uh, you know, just a lot of little stuff, uh, you know, cleaning, etc. And just as an example, so I haven't really been playing all that much. Now I did play. All of Hellblade 1 to get ready for Hellblade 2. So I I had an interesting story. Now, we haven't mentioned this, but Hellblade 2, of course, is out. It did get reviews. Almost the exact same rating as the first one did, which is uh, would be a failure to me because the whole point of a sequel is for it to be better than the first game. But hey, it's almost the exact same kind of reaction situation here. I can't imagine how much this game probably cost them. Uh, because I think there's a hundred people at that studio. 
I imagine the vast majority were working on this, maybe some of them working on Mara, and then the other people were coming from, what was that online game that no one liked from them? Blood something? No one cares. So you have to imagine this thing costing a good bit of money, and it doesn't seem like it resonated with many people at all. It doesn't seem like many people are playing it just kind of seems like it came out which just goes to show you no matter how many times i say it in the show again i say this as an xbox fan i guarantee you if you think i am not an xbox fanboy check out my achievements i have more than you i promise i promise i do i have more than you so let that not be the question here i am speaking plainly as someone who is observing the situation how do they keep messing this up? It's getting, frankly, fascinating. Because it's just like, how do you keep messing up now? This was supposed to be the easy one. Just give them money and time to really cultivate a great, tight, eight-hour experience. With puzzles and, you know, not crazy action, but something to keep you engaged and it seems like every aspect of the game has semi gotten worse now. I have heard mixed things. I've heard people, it, it does actually resonate with a lot of people. So I am speaking from someone who has yet to play, but I am shocked to see that we're still getting these reactions from the games. What is happening out there? We're getting this, we're getting, we're still getting the sixes in these games. Why cannot we, why can't we manage? Matt Booty, what are you doing out there? What is happening? Please tell me. I would love to know. Alas, I won't. Alas, I won't. But uh, unfortunately, Hellblade 2 does not seem like it got anyone excited. I will still be playing it. I need to finish my Hellblade 1 achievement. I need two of the little lore stones. I'll have the, f the game fully done. And then I'll be moving on to Hellblade 2. Uh, the game apparently is five hours. Now... Apparently, it's like five hours, 45 minutes, apparently. So, like, around six hours-ish. Depends on how you play the game, assumably. But it seems like it is even shorter than the first game, which is shocking, to say the least. And somehow, the combat is even simpler, which is... I still don't quite believe. I've seen so many people say that specifically. And I still have trouble believing it. So, I, I, I have to play it to know. Because literally in the, it's just light, heavy attack, and then you can parry, and then you can activate it. I don't know. I'm I'm just shocked, frankly, uh, that we just keep finding ourselves in this situation. Now, it looks very pretty. I can't wait to play this on my big OLED. It's going to look incredible. I can't. I, I just can't wait. But but it's it's really shocking. Now, going back, Hellblade 1, I played through Hellblade 1, loved it. Of course, played it with headphones. It felt really nice. Uh, with all the little whispers, people doubting her and stuff, freaking out. I, lo I loved it. I don't think I have really anything to add that people haven't said already about this specific game, but it was very good. I liked the kind of guessing yourself mentality of the game. The puzzles were really fun. I It did take me a while for like one or two of them, but the majority of them you can kind of figure out pretty quickly. I liked that uh, it felt like I was finding all the lower stones. Like I said, I only missed two in the whole game, which I felt cool. I was like, oh, okay, so I've only missed two. That feels good. You know, I, I feel like I'm being thorough in my searching and these things. But I will hold my thoughts of Hellblade 2 for when I play it. I am, I've am i been waiting for a perfect night where I can sit down and beat it in a day. I could just sit down, beat it in a day, and then I move on. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. Let's go to... Roundup. Dusk Gollum, known and respected leaker and someone who is appearing more and more in the show. Well, I guess who's being said more and more in the show. States that Resident Evil Zero and Code Veronica remakes are currently in development right now. There's a full tweet explaining what is happening with Capcom Resident Evil, and they go further on to say uh, a couple things. So one, there is no remake for Resident Evil 1 right now. Or... Resident Evil 5. So that's two things that they're stating uh, that they seem confident in. There is no remake for either of those games, 1 or 5. The new game, of course, being Resident Evil 9, has actually been pushed to late 2025, 2026. Now, if you doubted Dusk Gollum, which, you know, always grain of salt with a lot of people, 
uh, known industry people were actually kind of retweeting it and being like, you know, yay, this is actually correct. This is what they've heard. So it seems like Dust Golem is pretty much on the nose with this. Uh, go check out Dust Golem, follow him if you want to get more of these things. But not a huge Resident Evil guy. I love the Resident Evils. I don't have really much else to add other than can't wait for more Resident Evil. I love the new remake styles. Could not get into the uh, controls of the original games. I know tank controls. I understand that that's kind of, you know, you're not meant to be able to control it. I don't find horror in the lack of control. I I would rather find horror in other ways. So can't wait for them to be modernized and I will be playing them. Definitely Zero and Veronica whenever that's done. Now, let's start the show for the week. Sony had an interesting week as they have had two massive problems on their hands, actually. Both of their own making. Let's start chronologically uh, at the very beginning with a small storm of hate around one person, Neil Druckmann, studio head of Naughty Dog, Sony's most acclaimed developer, as it seems he had quite a bit to say at the annual Sony Group meeting about his upcoming game currently being worked on. This meeting, he was quoted from an interview that happened prior, saying, quote, it could redefine mainstream perceptions of gaming, end quote. And this specific quote was thrown around on Twitter, stating it was an exaggeration, mainly to point out Neil specifically, uh, as the games he has made have either had a feel or a similar feeling, all of them being Last of Us games and remasters and these sorts of things, and that's what many people pointed out. And it could maybe potentially have some sort of political undertone to the anger as well, uh, given what Neil has been accused of thinking and believing, etc. Neil followed the reaction with his own response that was uh, completely written out on his Twitter account, where a lot of his response was lost due to Sony shortening a lot of what he said. So what I'm saying here, sorry, I get a little lost at the end there. I apologize. Bad writing. So what he's saying here is he actually posted the full interview question and his answer. Uh, he said it was rambling. He actually opens that tweet only really saying one sentence, hey, that's not quite what I said, links what he said. It goes on to explain his point more thoroughly and not quite as grandstanding-y -y kind of thing. And uh, it went as far as Sony themselves actually apologized and said, hey, we apologize. We actually took Neil Druckmann's quote kind of out of context and misrepresented what he said. And I think that is clear that he was angry about this very situation saying, you know, hey, I didn't really say that and people are dragging me for this. You know, I am a huge fan of Neil, so I'm not going to pretend like I am not going to have some sort of predisposition to what my answer would have been to the situation. But I don't know. I didn't feel. I don't know, in good faith of them, people were kind of picking at him for saying this. And again, he didn't even say it. But, like, people are really kind of dogging on this guy. I don't really interact with, like, the negativity usually on Twitter. I try not to. I can say I feel like it's just going to feed into itself, like some some sort of Ouroboros situation. But I thought it was interesting that many people just took this stance, you know, make fun of The Last of Us, which, hey, it's really funny that we have, like, eight different versions of Last of Us 1 and 2. I get it. I get it. That is funny. I, I agree. It's just they were kind of attacking him personally. People were bringing up past things that he did, uh, like uh, the, the infamous red carpet kind of standing there waiting for pictures, but no one's taking his pictures. But he clearly was told to stand there. He does. I don't think he really wants his picture taken. Not important anyways. But it's just a lot of small things like that where it seems like people just don't like him. And then and, and most people just kind of took this chance to dunk on him. There was a clarification made. If you'd like, you could read the full comment. It does actually go into, you know, how he's excited for the game. He said a bit too much already, st stating very, very specific things. Uh, but there you go. I'm excited for the game, as I always am. Uh, as I always am. For any Naughty Dog game, they can make anything. The and the next one's going to be a new IP. Cannot wait. And I was surprised that we jumped so quickly. And uh, there's another thing. I'm surprised we, these things, he was at an ma annual meeting for like shareholders like well yeah it's gonna sound like nonsense no one's gonna sound like what they talk like normally i don't know i don't know i'm moving on this was resolved and not much came out of it other than his, uh, sony's official channel apologizing for misquoting him 
But next up, we have a much, much bigger deal that was recently, uh, that rec- that uh, happened very recently as of recording. Now, we're going over to the recently purchased studio Bungie as PlayStation themselves accidentally hit live on Destiny 2's next expansion almost a week early. This is, of course, Destiny 2 the final shape, their latest expansion in the ongoing game, Destiny 2. Now, the way you got this update was a little different. It wasn't just kind of natively on your system. You actually had to kind of force an update through PlayStation's cloud service specifically. So you would have to, I believe, own PlayStation Extra, then stream Destiny 2, I believe. And then you would force an update somehow in that realm of playing the game. And then you would get the update that way. That's as far as i understand is how it works um so there you go now uh back to the write-up uh you then had full access to the expansion although it seems the service did not recognize your character so you had to play through it as if you were a new account this led to multiple potentially thousands of people playing it early which in turn led to many weapons getting leaked, uh, including those from the raid. More importantly, though, some people seem to have had time to completely finish the campaign. So beware of spoilers if you are someone who is prone to them, as they will be all over social media until the thing actually launches. That, first off, I woke up to this. Uh, seeing like this, this is this is leaking. I was like, oh, it leaked, as in like, oh, you know, maybe like some sort of data mind happened. That's what I was expecting because uh, I I'm actually on a Discord channel with a bunch of friends uh, that also play the game. So I, you know, I woke up to 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 this reaction, like, oh, you know, someone data mind. Like that's that's whatever. You know, it sucks, but the, who cares? That's not what happened. Um, <laughs> so. It seems like you can pretty much know the entire campaign. Um, At first, apparently, it was uh, hard to get into it because, again, it it treated you like a new account. So it's not like you could immediately jump in the campaign. You had to, like, do an intro quest. Then you got to play. But I guess some people had enough time to do that. Or maybe there was a way of getting out of that or something. I'm not really sure. But someone played it. Uh, one of the people I follow actually on Twitter. I don't usually interact with them that much. But it's they're called Bungie Leaks. And they actually made a tweet. It's like, hey, we're not going to post it here. Uh, it'll, you know, it'll only be on our Discord. But um, some, we know someone who has played and beat it. And, co- and, and could tell us the entire story. And I was like, wow. So this was not something that was up for a few hours. Apparently it was something that people got around to being able to use quite a bit of. And it is a shame. Spoilers, you know, beware out there. Beware the spoilers. Beware if you care. I don't think there's many things that could be told to me that I'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe that. I am in shambles. I'm pretty much ready for anyone to like kind of die in this game. And I'm not like super attached to anyone. I gotta be honest. Maybe one character specifically. Eh, two, if you include like me as a character, uh, maybe that would be a big spoiler. But uh, but you know, maybe some maybe we learn something else about the main villain. But I can't imagine something's being told to me. I'd be like, oh my god, I can't believe this. You know, I, eh. I'm not, I'm not really too concerned about myself, but I do feel bad for anyone who now has you kind of walk on eggshells. You know, it's it's a whole stress thing now. You got to worry about, oh, am I going to see something when I turn on Twitter right now? Do I have to go like mute things? Oh, you know, I like Reddit. That, you know, am I, I going to get screwed there? So I do feel bad for people, uh, of course. Uh, and and uh, it got so deep where, and I looked at some of the stuff, not the story stuff. I looked at like the gear. I don't mind. I don't really find weapons being a spoiler, to be honest. Uh, like, I'm not going to look at a, a weapon and be like, oh, my God, like, uh, like I've been spoiled. So I looked at, like, a couple of the weapons that people put took screenshots of, a couple of, like, you know, the like, new perks and the new traits and the new XYZ. And uh, cool. Everything was cool. You know, I'm not more or less excited now. Uh, I'm just ready for this to be out. I'm ready to play Prismatic, which if you don't know or you don't follow Destiny 2, um, you have subclasses, and that prismatic is like a combination of all of them, which is going to be really fun. 
Uh, but aside from that, I don't want to bore people with Destiny 2 talk, so I, I'm just going to kind of move on. But I did want to bring this up. Of course, this is a very big deal. Uh, Sony, a very massive, very, very big mess up here. I, I'm shocked that this kind of fell through the cracks. Uh, I am imagining, like, I am assuming Bungie probably sent out the coding and, like, the builds and all these things, maybe. And maybe that's what triggered this. Like, oh, here's final version, and someone hit the wrong button, and it went live in this very specific way. I don't know. I don't know. I'd be very interested to see how something like this could even happen, because, like, you have to imagine there's a lot of buttons that have to be pressed for this to go live, but, eh, there you go. It could have been a bug, too. Could have been, could technically be no one's fault, kind of. All right, moving on. Call of Duty had its biggest question answered this week. Well, I guess I, I guess you could technically say two questions answered this week. Uh, following a small unveiling of its both name and where you could potentially play it without actually purchasing it, both things were answered this week. Now, this is, of course, the original question, is it going to be coming to Game Pass? Well, the answer is most definitely yes. Call of Duty's next title, on top of being able to be played in Game Pass, will be an installment in the Black Ops series of games that started in 2010. It's called Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Not much else is known, though, other than that there's some promotional art showing Saddam Hussein in it. And there are some rumors that the game may actually feature the September 11th attacks uh, that, were, that happened in the United States. To some degree, uh, there will be a full reveal June 9th at the Xbox Showcase airing at 10 a.m. Pacific. If... You are excited. I am, of course. I will be probably both live reacting to it and we'll have a post breaking down that showcase, talking about it. I'll see if I can get somebody uh, on that show for that week if I feel the inclination. Very excited, though. Very, very excited for this. Uh, one, I'm excited to be excited for a Call of Duty, I guess I should say. Now, it being on Game Pass both is awesome because I have Game Pass, so I don't have to buy it win for me but two i kind of like that we're getting a little more modern we're getting a little close to the teeth i like kind of pushing boundaries and what we can do in video games spec ops the line i think is a great example of what i'm trying to get across here and i think black ops 6 has the potential to kind of nail something if they know how to write well and get that campaign going i think we might have something very cool on our hands now that being said Call of Duty's had a while since if it had a really good campaign. Modern Warfare 3 was a complete mess. I didn't even play it. But it was a complete mess. Modern Warfare 2, in my opinion, was very good, but people didn't like it. Uh, and they completely floundered on all of that and ruined it all with Modern Warfare 3. So, in my opinion, they're at a zero right now, and I'm just kind of waiting for them to deliver again. So maybe this is the, the beginning of something where they might deliver. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not really sure. But, here we are. Call of Duty, Game Pass, Black Ops 6, full reveal June 9th. Get excited, because I will be. That's the show for the week. No date updates. We only have what's queued for the week. Chill week. Date updates, of course, most of that will be the showcase. So kind of think of a lot of this episode's going to be shared with the showcase, of course. That, that should be live by the time you're watching this. If it's not come back either the next day or in the next couple of hours. I'm going to be trying. So the idea is showcase goes live in less than 50 minutes as of recording right now. So the idea is that goes live. I watch it, take notes. I then have a reacts for you ready tomorrow around noon. Hopefully that sounds good for everyone. I'll be doing a full breakdown talking about uh, what to, uh, what, what we saw and all these things. Uh, no predictions, of course. I don't think that's necessary uh, for this. I'm just ready to see it. I'm ready for PlayStation to talk and show us some games. Uh, we are very close to the summer showcase for PlayStation. Very, very close. Uh, I know it's out there, so cannot wait for that. But aside from that, let's get into uh, what's queued up for the week. Now, of course, this could be a game, a TV show, a movie, a podcast, a book, a comic book, a manga, anything. What do you have queued up for the weekend? Answer this in the comments below, or of course you can tweet at me at EVM1000. We'll have a conversation about what you have queued up for the weekend. Now, I have queued up Destiny 2, Hellblade 2. We've already discussed really what I've been going to be playing. 
uh, Destiny 2 is only going to be around for when I need to help someone. For instance, tonight I'll be helping uh, former co-host Alex play a little bit of Destiny 2, kind of mess around, play, play, get get his feet wet, play one of the last missions, do a couple other missions that he's missed, have him really prepped and ready to go for Tuesday, uh, and then Hellblade 2 at some point. I will have Hellblade 2 done by next recording, I promise. I promise. Keep it to me, okay? Because it will be there. I swear. Aside from that, that's going to be the week for this. Going to be a show for the week. This is going to be a shorter one, but again, it's it's not really short because I have a, I have two episodes on top of each other. So you know, it's you're you're going to get your daily dose of easy cheapers. Aside from that, thank you so much for tuning in, for liking, comment, subscribing, sharing with a friend. And thank you for taking the time with me today, as this was a good one. I missed everyone out there, so I'm glad I had the time to kind of sit down, really really uh, come through with this, give my thoughts on everything, and let's get to that state of play. And until then, until then go Chief.